I am a huge fan of sleek, well-tapered workout joggers. But uh, you know what I'm not a fan of? Spending like 40 bucks on them. So because of that, if you want some workout pants at a decent price, you were gonna get this dumpster fire. No bueno. I'm SD and we ain't got time for that. Let's sew. Let's start by flipping these bad boys inside out so that we can measure and pin them. Wait, what? Yeah, I'm gonna measure them and I'm gonna pin them inside out because it's a lot easier to do it that way and it still gives you a really good idea of what the finished product is gonna look like. These pants, these pants are just hideous. Honestly, whose idea was this? Whose idea was this to make these pants like this? I want names. And the worst parts, oh, the worst part about these pants is that ridiculous rise. The rise is gonna be that distance that's between your waist and your crotch. And on these pants, it's wider than the Nile River. Seriously, look at it. It looks like I am wearing a diaper. Let's uh, let's let's change up that whole depends look we got going on. Now these pants are 31 inches from the crop seam all the way down to the cuff, which is just another way of saying the end of the pants. What we did is we put a pin that's an inch from that crotch seam and then another one four inches down. And then we put a pin every four inches until we get to the bottom. But wait, wait 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 SD slow down how do I how do I know where to put the pins how do I know how much I'm supposed to measure and do I measure from the seam or do I measure from the end of the pants like I I do it I don't get it well as far as measuring goes you can kind of sort of do either or you can measure from the seam or you can measure from the edge of the garment. But you just wanna make sure that you're consistent and you wanna be aware that if you measure from the end of the garment, that seam is actually gonna add like a quarter of an inch. So heads up, if you think it's an inch and a half, it's actually more like an inch and three quarters. Yes, math said like no one ever. And this is the part where you just get creative with it. Test out different widths and see how you feel about them. See how it looks. Start with taking an inch off and just kind of work your way up from there or even work your way down from there. Once you start doing this for more pairs of pants, you're gonna kind of sort of develop a baseline as to what you like to take off of your pants. But since you have never done this before, here's what I did. I've got these pants pinned from the waist down to the knee at an inch and a half and then from the knee all the way down to the cuff it comes into two inches which is really gonna give me a nice taper after you pin them up try them on and see how they feel is it too tight well just move the pins out by about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch they're too loose then just go the opposite way in those same increments <laughs> keep watching till we get to the sewing part because I messed up bad. When you were done measuring and pinning and trying them on and spinning in circles on stools like I usually do, make sure they look exactly like this. All that fabric will be on the left side well out of the way of our sewing machine so that it doesn't get all bunched up under there. And we can just feed our pants through that machine like a hungry, hungry fabric monster. Oh, and I wonder why I have no friends. We are going through the whole thing in one shot. One line all the way from the cuff through the crotch on down to the other cuff. Don't worry, it, it's easy. And if you've sewed a shirt before you got this butt, Hang on, there's there's kind of a big difference. We, for the first time ever, are going to be using the safety stitch. Bloop. Now it's very similar to a straight stitch. A straight stitch is going to be going forward indefinitely, whereas a safety stitch is gonna go forward twice and back once. Forward, forward, back. Forward, forward, back. Don't, don't. Don't, don't, oh, whoa, 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 no, 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 no. I don't wanna to get too close to that song. I'll probably get demonetized. And because of that stitch going backwards once, it creates an incredibly strong stitch. And yo, I got a squat butt, so I need all the protection down there that I can get. And look at that, we are at that crotch seam, but we're just gonna keep going straight through. No stopping at all, and now what we did is we just gave our pants a lower rise, we got rid of that diaper butt. Man, the things that I thought that I would never say. Oh, wait for it, wait for it. 
Here it comes. Boom! I lost it. My thread, it got all frayed and then it broke. Just like that, I was almost done and I lost my top stitch. Oh, and uh, that, that actually happened three times. But really, I'm kind of glad that it happened because it might happen to you too. And if it does, just don't panic. It's not a big deal. All you gotta do is cut off that bottom stitch from your bobbin, set everything back up, line your pants up where that seam left off or where it broke, and then just keep going. You are done, cut it up, throw a nice zigzag stitch on there so it doesn't get frayed, and you've got yourself some $40 joggers for 16 bucks. <laughs> Off to Target you go. SD out, deuces!